and good afternoon. It is Friday, and that means it's time for our regular lunch and learn. Now, today, we're going to talk about a bacteria that was only discovered about 50 years ago on Easter Island, and this particular bacteria has potential to uh, help us to, to, to live longer and to retard some of those age related diseases that none of us want to have, right? And so I don't know if you know where Easter Island is, but you may have seen on National Geographic or something like that, an island that has all these big heads, big stone heads. That's Easter Island, okay? I'm not quite sure where it is. I think it's in the Philippine area, but that could not be right. Uh, anyway, from this particular bacteria, uh, from this particular island, they found this bacteria. Now, it's interesting, some airline wanted to build an airport on this island, and so they sent a bunch of scientists to see what kind of environmental impact it would have if they built the island, the uh, airport there. And while the scientists were there, they noticed these particular, got a hair in my eye, they noticed these particular bacteria, and they started testing this bacteria, and apparently it is only found on Easter Island. So they think it is a powerful life extender and it may be a transformative treatment for age-related diseases. Now this happened in 2009 that the National Institute on Aging Intervention Testing Program published a groundbreaking study indicating that, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this right, rapamycin extended the lifespan of mice by 9% to 14%. Experiments conducted by various research institutions worldwide have further corroborated these findings and have found the compound to have significantly greater life extending effects. The drug also in have exhibits rejuvenating effects. So if you know anything about us here at Abundant Health and Wellness, we're all about longevity. We're all about reversing the aging process. We're, we do that internally with the Pharmanex products. We do that externally with the new skin products. And this is just another product that we can incorporate into our regimen that's going to help us live longer, live stronger. This particular drug can stimulate hair regrowth and prevent hair loss in a short period of time. It reduces proteins related to aging in the skin and it increases collagen in the skin. The drug can even show positive effects in treating age-related diseases such as Alzheimer's disease as well as diabetes, heart, and muscle conditions. So while the drug label for rap rap rapamycin currently does not claim to extend human life. Some people with a strong desire for longevity have already sought this medication from their doctors and they're taking it in very small amounts on a regular basis. Now, there was a further study in 2023 in Geroscience, which is uh, um, gerontology, right? Um, they employed a questionnaire to survey 333 adults taking rapamycin off-label, mostly under the supervision of a physician. And the vast majority, 95%, reported that they were taking this drug for healthy longevity and anti-aging reasons. Almost 19% was that were taking it to prevent dementia, and a few others were for cardiovascular disease or cancer. No one reported taking the drug for its original use, which is anti-rejection for organ transplants. So if you or anyone you love is having um, or have had a transplant or is in line for a transplant, you might be given this drug because it has anti-rejection uh, properties. So this drug is not made in a laboratory. It is not in synthetic molecule. It is actually from nature. And this is from Dr. Robert Lufkin, who is the adjunct clinical professor at the University of Southern California Keck School of Medicine. So in December 1964, the Chilean government planned to build this international airport on Easter Island. When they did that, they found this particular bacteria. 
this substance, this bacteria, starves fungi and the things that are around them and prevents the organisms from growing. So says Arlen Richardson, who is a professor at biochemistry and physiology at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. In the local indigenous language, Easter Island is called Rapa Nui. Maybe that's not right. That's what it looks like. Therefore, the substance was named uh, rapamycin because it was found in the soil of Easter Island, and that is its traditional indigenous name. Now, in addition to its antibacterial properties, scientists observed that it could inhibit the growth of animal cells. So, rapamycin's specific target is cellular protein essential to the living organism called TOR, T-O-R. TOR acts like a switch for cell growth. Now, TOR is arguably one of the most important biological molecules ever known, says Dr. Lufkin, as it fundamentally affects metabolism. It is worth mentioning that TOR derives its name directly from its association with rapamycin, TOR stands for target of rapamycin. So, mTOR is used in many studies and it stands for the mechanistic target of rapamycin. TOR essentially does one thing, it senses the presence of nutrients. When nutrients are available, TOR signals for cell growth. Conversely, when the nutrients are scarce, the cells stop growing and initiate repair. Both of these modes are healthy and necessary for life, says Dr. Lufkin. Rapamycin was initially used as an immunosuppressant. We talked about that. Higher doses, three milligrams per day, were found to reduce the activity of immune cells, thereby suppressing the immune system rejection of the foreign organs. So, if you want to not want to, that's not the right word, but if you are a transplant uh, patient, then you're going to want to have this at the rate of three uh, milligrams per day. It was approved in 1999 by the FDA for kidney transplant patients. Because of its ability to initiate cell growth or inhibit cell growth, rapamycin was later used as an anti-cancer drug. In 2007, uh, the rapamycin analog, uh, I'm going to say this word, I'm not sure that this is exactly right, uh, Tamersolimus <laughs> was first approved in treating kidney cancer. Dr. Lufkin noted that rapamycin is effective against multiple types of cancer and the FDA has approved it as the primary or adjunct therapy for eight different types of cancer. Now, there's a connection between the immunosuppressive and anti-cancer effects of rapamycin. It appears to have a positive effect on cancer control in patients who have transplants. For example, heart transplant patients, Dr. Lufkin said. Because of the immune suppression, the most common cause of death after transplant is not organ rejection, but is actually cancer. So this is something that was new to me. And so when I read these reports, as you can see, there are words that I have never heard before. And so you're just going to have to forgive me about that. But this particular drug has been used for the last 50 years, maybe not quite 50 years, in treating the transplant patients and the cancer patients. So the Mayo Clinic did a trial. It was a control trial, tracking more than 500 heart transplant recipients for 10 years. They found that the patients using rapamycin for anti-rejection had a 66% lower chance for malignant tumors than those using other tumor or anti-rejection drugs. Now, I think that if I had a choice, if I was a transplant recipient, that I would be asking for this particular drug because it does prevent the cancers that are associated with the immune suppression of the drugs that they give you so that you won't reject your new organ. It's really complicated. I mean, people think that, yay, I get an organ transplant and I'm okay. Yay, I'm glad for that. But you have to take handfuls of drugs 
in order to get your body not to reject the foreign tissue. So it's not uncomplicated. It's not necessarily easy. So, you know, people have the idea of, oh, I just get a new organ and I'm going to be on my happy way. It's not quite that easy, although we are glad that we know how to do organ transplants for those people uh, that need it. So the main way that rapamycin uh, action is to inhibit the mTOR, which can induce a fasting-like state in cells, which triggers autophagy. Now, autophagy is a term that they give you or give the cells when the cells are not busy making enzymes, doing different things that they do, digesting your food, converting food to energy. When you are in a uh, fasting state, say intermittent fasting, the body is not digesting food, the body is not working hard, it is doing what is called autophagy, which is cleaning up itself, taking care of its metabolic waste, taking care of uh, the things that are toxic that are in the cell that need to get out of the cell. And so rapamycin helps to facilitate that specific um, mechanism in the body. It cleans up the cell of its own waste and it conserves energy for survival. Now, Mr. Richardson, who we talked about earlier, explains that mTOR sends growth signals to cell which are crucial for children and young animals, aiding bone growth, brain maturation, and other developmental processes. However, this signaling pathway may adversely affect older adults and mature animals. With age, the mTOR can become overactive because of disease or oxidative stress, similar to constantly pressing the gas pedal <clears throat> while driving the car. This renders the cells hyperfunctional, contributing to age-related diseases and even cancer. So, we want to know and we want to be aware of what's going on with our cells, with our mitochondria, because it is the mitochondria that keeps our cells doing what our cells need to be doing. So this is one reason why this little jewel called Age Lock Youth, I don't know if you can read that, Age Lock Youth, this is a vitamin and it's got some other nutrients in there that triggers my mitochondria to reverse back to a younger state so that in, it inhibits the aging process in the cells. So if you inhibit the aging process in the cells, you're going to live longer, you're going to live healthier, and there's no point in living long if you're not going to be healthy. And so this is one reason but that we do the Pharmanex products here in the clinic because they're all scientifically proven to combat the aging process. So oxidative stress, which is rusting from the inside out, okay? We know that if we don't have enough antioxidants in our diet, then we're going to have oxidative stress. Where do we get antioxidants in our diet? We get them from our fruits and vegetables, or we get them from really, really good absorbable vitamins that are made from fruits and vegetables. So it is the uh, carotenoids, it's the bioflavonoids that we eat in our fruits and vegetables that cause our body to uh, make these chemicals, these enzymes that help with the mitochondria and that prevent oxidative stress. So we don't want to be rusting from the inside out, all right? The modern diet and lifestyle play a significant role in the overactivation overactiv of the mTOR. With the agricultural revolution, food has become increasingly accessible. Subsequently, widespread use of refrigerators and processed and ultra-processed food also contribute to oxidative stress in our diet. So this has led to people eating all the time and the mTOR is turned all the way on in its growth mode, says Dr. Lufkin. If we inhibit it, we basically slow down the growth of things that we do not want, thereby delaying aging and preventing many age-related diseases. This has already been proven in animal models. Now, there was a study that was published in Journal Science showing that rapamycin extended the lifespan of mice, which had been shortened because of disease. 
In another study, middle-aged mice were injected with rapamycin for three months. Typically, the mice would die at about 30 months old, but their lifespans were extended by 60% through the use of this drug. So when they're using these studies on animal models, they design the studies that can be adapted if this happens in the animals, what would this look like in humans, right? And so what they're saying is in the animal model, it's extending the lifespan by 60%. Now, we don't want just to extend the lifespan because, I mean, you can be in a coma and live forever. We don't want that. You've got your machines, they're breathing for you, they're doing whatever they need to do. That's not what we're looking for is extended life. What we're looking for is health. We're looking for the benefits of uh, the antioxidants in our body to retard the oxidative stress and the aging process. And this particular drug helps to do that. So... This is really exciting for people who are very active. They want to make sure that they are um, not going to be uh, sus subject to different age-related diseases that may run in their families. And so that's why this is really, really encouraging. Rapamycin is anti-inflammatory and posit positively affects the cardiovascular system. This is according to Dr. Andrea Mayer, who is the professor of medicine and healthy aging and dementia research at the National University of Singapore. And she's the honorary professor of general me medicine and aged care at the University of Melbourne. So there are a lot of scientific studies. There are a lot of people that are looking at anti-aging. Now, this is not in this report, but there have been for years many, many reports that showed that humans, grown up humans who restrict their calories, they tend to live longer and they tend not to have the age related diseases that people who don't restrict their calories have. And so that's really important, even though we have an abundance of food, that doesn't mean that we should be grazing all the time. It, when you do that, you put a lot of stress on your immune system, you put a lot of stress on your digestive system, and you are edging your way toward age-related diseases. The body was never intended to uh, eat full-time all the time. That's just not how we were made, all right? We were hunter-gatherers, and uh, just going to the refrigerator does not count as hunting and gathering, okay? It's supposed to be a little bit more activity involved in that. So, given that rapamycin has been shown to promote longevity in animals, will humans be able to use it for the same reason? Now, Mr. Richardson says he doesn't want to go out on a limb and say that, okay, but he does say that the research shows that it could be very, very beneficial for humans at a very low dose. He said that there's got to be more uh, studies done, more uh, research done, and he said that it is a long way off. However, if you know this information, if you know that this is available, if somebody that you know and love is dealing with any of these, you know, brain diseases or cardiovascular diseases or anything like that, you might want to ask your doctor if you can have a low dose prescription of this and just see what happens. There needs to be more clinical trials. There doesn't seem to be a lot of side effects with this drug. It, like I said, it's not a synthetically made drug. It is a natural found bacteria, and it has all of these wonderful benefits so far on the animal models. Mr. Richardson says that he believes that for individuals with irreversible conditions such as Alzheimer's, exploring rapamycin treatment under the guidance and prevention of the doctor might be a very viable option. Alessandro Beto, who is the acting assistant professor in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at the University of Washington, noted that while many drugs are effective in mice, they ultimately fail in humans. Some, on, some small scale human studies suggest that rapamycin improves specific age related markers. According to Mr. Beto, rapamycin's longevity effects in humans haven't yet been proven, 
because we still don't have good proxies for longevity. However, alternate Alternative measures of longevity, such as epigenetic clocks, are currently being developed and improved. So what this means is people aren't living all that long, so we don't really know how much longer this drug could, could work. And so we do know that the average lifespan is, I don't know, between... 80, 90, but we do have people that live to 100. We do have people that live past 100. I've, I read uh, about a lady, I think it was a lady uh, in the last two weeks, she was 112. So obviously uh, the body can live a whole lot longer. In some countries, and I can't remember honestly, um, it's not a developed country, it's a very rural country, very agricultural. They had people that I think one was 130 and one was 160. So that's way, way longer than what we live today. And so um, those reports I had read about 10 years ago. So I'm not sure what the current research is on that. But there are people in different zones of the world that live longer than we do. Those are called the blue zones. You can Google that. You can research that. And you can see what they do that we don't do here in the United States. So there are people that can live live longer. I do believe that our food supply here in the United States is not optimum. Yes, we have a lot of it, but there's not a great deal of nutrition in there. This is why we always recommend that you take a vitamin, even if you're eating organically, even if you're eating whole foods, you're not getting the nutrition that you need. The studies show, the last studies that I have read compared food in 20, I think it was 20, uh, 2002, to 1985. In 2002, the food had lost about 73% of its nutrition. All right. So that means from 1985 to 2002, the food had lost 70% of its nutritional density. Now we are here in 2024 and things have not gotten better. Okay, they just have not gotten better. And so the food that we eat, while it might be very tasty, does not have a lot of nutritional density. So we all need to be taking a vitamin. I take vitamins every day, most days, twice a day. The reason I do that is because the vitamins that I take are uh, scientifically formulated to last me for 12 hours, and there is a 24-hour day that I live in, and so I want to have the nutrition that I need for my waking hours, and I want to have the nutrition that I need for my sleeping uh, hours, all right? Um, Mr. Beto goes on to say, I think there are greater benefits from rapamycin that we do not even begin to understand now. Despite having a relatively good safety record, rapamycin has been approved for human use for only a little bit more than 20 years and randomized controlled trials on human longevity with rapamycin has only begun in 2016. So we don't have a whole lot of evidence here. We don't have many years of evidence. But I'm just telling you, if I was fighting cardiovascular disease, if I was fighting dementia, uh, Alzheimer's ran in my family, that kind of thing, you can bet that I would be finding a medical doctor and be talking about doing this on a preventative basis because I want to live a long time and I want to have all of my faculties as I do that. And I know you do too. So scientists are testing rapamycin on dogs and the reason they pick dogs is because dogs live in the same environment that we live in. And uh, their approach is expected to yield compelling results. The results should be interpreted with a little caution as many more studies testing rapamycin will follow, okay? In the meantime, there are other strategies to deal with anti-aging. And one of them we've already talked about, which was intermittent fasting. Now, Intermittent fasting is where you only eat in a small window of time. So here in the United States, we are used to eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, and we're used to snacking in between. 
So with intermittent fasting, and you can Google this, there are different windows. So some people restrict their eating to a four hour window. Some people restrict their eating to a six hour window, which means all the other hours outside of that restriction is non-eating time, it's fasting time. That gets the body into that state of autophagy where it can do its house cleaning, it can get rid of the debris, the waste products, the toxins, and all that kind of thing. I personally did intermittent fasting last year. Almost all, almost all year, I only ate one meal a day. I ate between the hours of five o'clock in the evening to eight o'clock in the evening, and I didn't eat before that, and I didn't eat after that, and it was okay. Um, you know, I lost thirty pounds, and I wanted to do that, and. Um, you know, is it something that I want to do full time for the rest of my life? I don't think it's healthy to do it full time for the rest of your life. But for me, at my age, I wanted to get rid of the pounds. I had reduced my calorie intake. I had done things. I'd done other things and nothing was working. So for me, I decided because of the, the autophagy, I decided to do intermittent fasting on last year. It wasn't hard. It takes a little bit of time to get used to your tummy settles down, it knows you're going to finally eat in that window, whenever you decide that window is, and during the rest of the time, it is doing housekeeping procedures to get rid of the toxic load, and the toxic load is why you were carrying around extra weight anyway. So, most people don't understand that. They think the top, the, the weight that they're, that they're, you know, carrying is because of what they're eating, and that's not automatically so. That can be so, I talked to a young lady yesterday who was not losing weight, and she should have been losing weight. And she said, well, I'm not eating on the plan. Oh, well, okay, well, that explains it, you know. But if you want to do that, you're eating well, you're eating correctly, and you're still not losing weight, you might find that intermittent fasting will work for you because of the autophagy process cleans up the cells, and when the cells are clean, they don't weigh as much. So that's something that's really good as well. So, um, Dr. Lufkin, who we talked about earlier, he says we don't want to just expect to take a pill and get the maximum uh, benefit. We must also avoid junk food, shorten our eating window, again, intermittent fasting. Combining rapamycin with lifestyle changes, such as reducing carbohydrate intake and avoiding overprocessed plant oils, getting regular sleep, staying active can lead to better results. He also explained that intermittent fasting is the most effective way of longevity, okay? Longevity is what we want. So, Dr. Mayer says rapamycin can have some side effects. The FDA notes that taking rapamycin as a therapeutic drug for preventing organ transplant may increase the risk of infection in certain cancers related to the immunosuppression. Now, there was a further review in the Nature of Aging in 2023 that indicated that the side effects of higher doses of rapamycin in organ transplant and cancer patients include oral cancers, gastrointestinal discomfort, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, and impaired wound healing. When they're doing their experiments for human uh, longevity, the dosage of the rapamycin is 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 milligrams per day. So if you are a uh, transplant, uh, person, they're giving you three milligrams a day. So taking 0.1 to 0.5 is a much, much reduced dosage, and they are showing that at that dosage, you're not having those negative side effects. So they are doing more random control trials. Uh, hopefully in the years to come, this will be some kind of mainstream treatment as we get older. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the age would be, but let's just arbitrarily say we're getting older. When did these age-related uh, diseases start? Probably in the 60s. I mean, the, the studies show that most uh, seniors at 65 here in the United States is, is when you are considered retired. And um, when they do your medical assessment at that year, they always want to know how, how many prescriptions you're on. And most seniors at the age of 65 are on 10 to 13 different prescriptions. Now, 
I'm past that age threshold and I'm on zero prescriptions. And so um, when I go and have my health assessments, they're going, well, why aren't you taking this, that, and the other? And it's like, because my blood work is good and I don't need it. So you can do a lot for yourself by monitoring your food intake, by monitoring uh, your blood work, by making sure that you're having good nutritious vitamins that your body can absorb. And I, I certainly believe that when you have those antioxidants in your body, it retards the oxidative stress and it is the oxidative stress that leads to sickness and disease. So it would be my hope that at some arbitrary age, 60, 65, something like that, they might just introduce this bacteria as a supplement that we could take to retard the age-related diseases that are ever lurking in the horizon. So that's a lot of information, not a whole lot we can do about it right this minute, although you can ask your doctor. Some doctors are agreeing to that, as we heard in the report, and um, it is showing some good promise for reversing the dementia and the cardiovascular diseases that older people get. So it's a lot of information. What you can do right now is intermittent fasting. What you can do right now is clean up your diet. What you can do right now is to take a vitamin full of antioxidants so you retard the oxidative stress that brings these sicknesses and diseases. So I've gone a little bit over. I apologize. It is the weekend. Self-care, relax, rejuvenate, restore. Those are all the things that we do. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate the time that you afford me every week and I will see you next week.